Welcome to the third lab of computer networks. Um, and this lab we will be covering the representation of internet addressing and the circuit programming in C. Before starting the new lab, I would like to just uh, ask you a quick question. So in the network programming, when we are pro making a circuit, uh, how do we define a circuit? So you can think of the correct one. Just after a while, you can check the correct answer. So previously we saw the socket, how, how we can define the socket. So the socket, basically the two number is correct. The first is domain and domain means that what, what kind of IP address you are using. Uh, is it IPv4 or IP version 6? And then what kind of the type of the socket you are using? And the, finally, there were the protocol if any you are using differently. So the second answer is correct. I hope you all know this. So in the first lab, we had studied the five fundamental parts of the client server communication. And uh, there were uh, first we creating a socket, then we were binding a socket to a port address. And, and finally, this client was connected to a server socket, which was listening on a certain port. So uh, these five steps of creating the sockets were given as follows. The socket creation and then binding the uh, internet address and also and the IP address and then binding the IP address and also the port number with the socket and then listening at that particular port and if there is any connection request coming on that particular port uh, that connection was uh, accepted by a server so the first four are concerned with the server and then there is a client and the client is also making a connection from the client side to the server and once the connection request is sent to the server then the connection is established In previous lab, we also saw how to create the server socket and then how to create the client socket in very detail. So in the server socket, as I explained in the previous lab, uh, there are four steps to create the server socket. Making a socket, then, then binding the IP and the port address for that socket, and listening at that particular socket, and finally accept any request that is coming at that port. And from the client side, uh, again, you have to make a socket and then you you have to make a connection request to the server socket. And once the server receive the connection and it accepted, then the server data can be loaded to the client and then the client can receive all the data that is coming from the server. So the data transmission happens from the server to the client. So, uh, before moving forward, uh, first of all, I, I would like to give you a brief review related to the logical address and ports related to the sockets. Uh, what is a port and what is the address? And I think you are you know the basic difference between the port and um, the IP. If you want to reach a particular computer, this is a computer and this is uh, uh, here can be any connecting device, internet device and then the, there is another computer and you want to send a data from this computer to that computer and you as I mentioned in the previous slide, you have to follow certain protocols. You cannot just directly access uh, this computer by connecting a wire from this from this computer to this internet device and this internet device is just plugged to the computer to the power and then again this computer is also connected through a wire until and unless either this device gives some address to this one and also some address to this one or you manually configure this computer with some address and that address is called IP address uh, internet protocol address so uh, this computer will require an address and also this computer will require an address to access each other. So if uh, this computer has to access this computer or this computer or this computer in the network, it has to access the, those computers through using that IP address. So the IP address is very important if you want to uh, uh, access any of the device inside a network. Then what is the port? Inside this computer or this computer or this computer, there will be a couple of applications running and you might not uh, be accessing only this device, but you will also be uh, willing to access 
a specific application within that device so to access that specific application within that device uh, for instance there is a messenger running or there is certain browser running or there is some other process running so to access that particular process within this device you not only need the IP address to reach this computer but you also need the port address to reach that particular application running within this device and the internet address are the IP address that you have you might have seen it in couple of places like uh, in network lab or some other places and it looks something like this 192.168.1.2 or 1. anything so these two numbers are very different but usually these numbers are quite consistent and then there are some uh, other classes of this IP like 10.10. something like something and other classes so there are a couple of classes of the IP so this is called basically the IP address 192.168.subnet uh, dot subnet and dot the particular node or that particular computer so all the, the this format of the address is called the IP address so logical addresses um, before giving you more insight about the IP addresses I think it, it's too complicated for you to digest it so let's let's go and see what uh, an IP address is and I'll give you just a simple analogy with a phone so for example uh, you are dialing some person um, in some country and then you have to use the phone sorry it's the previous program so we don't need it anymore and let's delete it okay delete so uh, for example you want to dial a person in uh, Korea so uh, for dialing a person let's let's assume that you are in foreign country for that reason first of all you have to dial this number then let's say that person is an ancient then you have to dial for example this one these two digits and then any number whatever the number is if you look at the pattern of this uh, mobile number you have 82 then you have 32 and then you have some number some random kind of number this one is your country code so if you dial this number uh, it will leave the other part of the country and the country code will be followed if it is plus plus a2 then it will directly divert to the South Korea then within the South Korea there are a lot of cities there are a lot of uh, regions and each region has its own local number so if you further want to see that what is that thing like what is the local number I hope you pretty much understand that thing but uh, let me uh, further elaborate it with this one mm okay so uh, I'll go to the Korea city uh, course for example so if you look at this one the city this one city has this one area code and what is the dialing code the main dialing code is the plus a2 which is uh, the country code and then followed by these two digit which is the area code of that particular city so if you have to dial the engine then first of all you have to dial the country code and then followed by the 32 which means the area code of that particular city so I think it's now pretty much clear and to do that uh, this means that this is the area code now uh, and the third one this is the identifier number uh, the identifier number means that the particular person that you are going to call this is the identifier number to call anyone uh, in South Korea who is living in Incheon and then uh, he will have a phone number you have to go through these three things and this is used for uh, direct access to a specific phone so I will also write it direct access to a specific phone and mm, 
also where yes so Korea so the IP addresses they have uh, several classes that we will just study in a while but uh, before get, diving deep into detail uh, let me just briefly explain you what is the network ID and what is the host ID and each address as I explained you here that uh, if you are going to dial a country uh, and if you are going to dial uh, uh, let me call it uh, unique identifier UNIQUE unique identifier yeah uh, so if you want to dial a person living in Incheon you have to go through the city code followed by the area code and these tools are basically defining the locality of that particular person and then within that locality there will be a lot of numbers and then that is that that's this specific uh, number belongs to that person who is living within this area uh, the same thing is here for instance you have um, an IP number like anything um, like this for example uh, you have to have the um, some uh, you, you should have two things defined there one is the net ID and the other is um, uh, how about writing it full name net ID and, and the other one is the host ID so the net ID is um, out of this uh, it depends which class of this so again the class I'll just explain you in a while but uh, um, for example you are using this particular network and you you are saying that okay this this is my net I met my net ID is this one and then you are saying that the host ID the remaining thing which uh, left we are left with that will go to the host ID so the same as this one the first two will go to that part and then the rest of will go to uh, and the rest of the numbers are de defining the number of that particular person but if we are talking about the uh, network the portion of this net uh, ID address is it's basically four byte each IP is basically four byte of address so the first of um, the first are maybe the two are maybe the three of them are belonging to the network uh, ID and the rest the remaining will be uh, defining the host identification so to understand it much better uh, let's see this one slide now what are the internet logical addresses there are two kind of uh, IPs one is the class full IP and the other is the classless IP so let me show you what is the class full and the, what are the classless IPs let me first um, go to the google.com and from there um, oops I didn't click it directly so let me go to the google.com and from the Google uh, let's see what are the class full network addresses are the class full IP addresses uh, class will IP addressing as you can see in this picture for example I'll just randomly click any of the picture that can give us a clear idea uh, I think um, and if I scroll it down I should see that picture this one so um, you see I have stolen this picture from here so that we suggest there in our slides and uh, look at this one uh, if you look at the class a IP um, you can see that the first byte is the network ID and the remaining four bytes uh, three bytes are belonging to the uh, host IDs and to in total the IP address is four byte so the first byte here is allocated to the network ID and the rest three bytes are allocated to the host ID but if you look at the class B address and the class B addressing the first two bytes are allocated to the networking ID and the last two bytes are uh, allocated to the uh, host ID and likewise in C 
most of the portion of the IP are allocated to the network ID and a smaller portion or the manner portion is allocated to the host ID. So if we go back to our example, uh, for example, if we are taking the class A IP, then this is true. But if it is the class B IP, this specific portion is belonging to this, this area and then the rest of the portion like this is belonging to the host ID. ID and if I'm talking about the class C IP then the first three are belonging to the um, host ID uh, network ID and the last one is belonging to the um, uh, host identification so depending upon the class and from there uh, it is divided into two portion each IP is divided into two portion part of that IP is specifying the network and that uh, in any area and the last one is showing the host identifier and that particular region like 192.168.378 um, and then for example 25 and if i write some thing like this then this one is showing the particular network and network id and this is the particular node within that particular area so within that uh, within that particular length particular subnet so i hope it's pretty clear now so here we can see there are two classes there are classless versus classful ip networks and the classful are uh, classified further into a b c and then d and e but since d and e are for the specific purpose they are not so much important the most important are a b and c ip addresses and i already showed you what kind of um, um, ip addresses are and the number of networks also alters with the class of the ip if you are using class a ip you can have as much as 126 networks but the fields become two bytes in the uh, class B so in that case you can have more networks which means that 16,000 around 16,000 of the networks and it becomes almost 2 million of the networks if you are using the class C IP so the uh, since more uh, the ID portion is mostly allocated to the network identifier so if the identifier has more uh, then it means that uh, in that case there can be more capacity for the networks but another thing happens for the host uh, if you have class C IP it means that you each uh, host or each network can host up to this much of computers so each network capacity can be as much as 254 so if you have like this much of networks in the class C IP, it means that you can each network can accommodate up to 250, 254 nodes in each network. Um, and then uh, if you look at this one, since uh, here the field for the um, there is reasonable field also for the host so even the network uh, address is two byte but there is still enough space to be allocated for each network to have the number of hosts uh, the number of computers and then this one if you check since the number of network is very less but enormous amount of computer can be connected with each host in more detail if i go deep into it uh, since the network id here is only one byte so there will be list number 126 uh, amount of networks can be available here but each uh, computer can have as variety of combination as the three bytes so three bytes is a huge number and that's sort of that's the reason then you you have more number of hosts in each network uh, the subnet masks mean that uh, which portion of the network is the network and which portion of the network is the host. So the zero is basically showing you the host portion and the other portion is showing you the network portion. And uh, case of class A, the first byte is since the host portion. So this one is um showing you the network portion and from there you will automatically understand that the number of networks could be as much as 126 and each network can accommodate as much as this much number of hosts 
So uh, here it's written uh, that the 255, this number, identify the network portion, which I already explained you. And this one is the network portion. And then this one uh, is the host portion. So the zero identifies the host portion and the 255 uh, identifies the network portion. And I can show you this thing here. If you go to the open uh, network troubleshoot, then go to the Ethernet and then go to the properties and then go to the IPv4. Here you can see now. Uh, obtain my in my case my computer is obtaining the IT automatically using some uh, the from the router so the router has some DSCP um, kind of capabilities and and the router whenever I open my computer it will automatically allocate any IP name address to my computer and I don't have to worry about statically allocating it uh, but if I were in at in high university because there all the IPs are mostly given to the computers and the labs statically, uh, so in that case I would have used the other portion. So uh, no matter what kind of uh, uh, class of IP I'm using, but if I'm using the IP class C, so it will be something like 192.168 and blah blah blah. And then I have to show that which portion of the network is the uh, network portion and which portion of the address is belonging to the host. In that case, I have to make 255, 255, 255. The first three uh, bytes of the network IP are belonging to the uh, uh, network, uh, network. And the last byte is uh, uh, showing the host number or the computer number. And the default gateway is something else. Uh, default gateway means that what is the outgoing port or what is the outgoing path for you? So this is usually the first number in that particular subnet. So if you are using subnet number two, uh, that will be 2.1. Uh, in that case, for example, my IP is one and two, one, six, eight, two dot. I'm using computer number 54, so it can be one and two, one, six, eight, uh, 2.54 so in that network I'm the 54th number computer and I'm using the subnet number 2 mm, I think you all know the subnet um, subnetting is basically dividing the logically dividing the networks into multiple networks and then since it is the class C IP so I will say 255 255 255 this portion is now going to show this is the host ID and the last one is the network uh, the, is the the first three bytes are showing us the network ID and the last one is showing us the host ID which means this uh, particular computer which is um, 54 I guess uh, I forgot what number I told you before but that one computer and what could be the default gateway the default gateway would be 1 and 2 1 6 8 2.1 so the first number will be always showing us the outgoing port for the uh, mm, the first number will be showing us always the default gateway okay so I hope this portion is pretty much clear now uh, the classless IP uh, it's showing us the IP address for example if you write down the IP uh, 10.252.0.101 and then the subnet uh, is uh, whatever but if you look at this notation CIDR notation will shows you what which one is the not which one is the subnet so if it is 16 it means that the first two bytes are going to be the network address and the last two bytes are going to be the um, host id if it were this number were eight uh, then this one we would be the subnet mask would be 255.0.0.0 and if this was um, 24 then it would be 255.255.255.0 so it, it depends on the CID, CIDR notation and since it is classless so based on that we say that which one is the network ID portion and which one is the host portion. Now coming again to the important part of our socket programming the port number and I think we, we saw this port number in quite uh, detail in the previous lab 
But let's dive a, le a little more deeper into port. What a port is. First of all, I would differentiate how a port number is different from the IP address. So, port number it's very um, important for uh, to access a process within a computer. Uh, let's say your computer it's uh, uh, it has a main address uh, or i can say your house uh, when you enter your house uh, it will have a, a main gate entrance right so from the gate entrance the entrance is one your main address is one but uh, when you enter your house there will be different doors inside your house or oh, you one door might be opening to your room your bedroom the other door might be opening to a restroom uh, the kitchen may have another door and then the lounge will have a different uh, door so each door is dedicated to a specific room uh, here from the room i mean an application or a process inside a computer so when you are accessing a computer you are accessing the computer using the main ip address but when you once you access that computer using the ip address inside the computer there are concurrently running applications so to access any of that application from the outside world you will also need a port number the server is using the port number to interface its own program with the outside world and similarly the outside world can uh, contact with that computer and then insert that computer to a that specific program using the port number so i hope it's now clear uh, pretty much clear uh, the uh, ip address is the d address of that particular device but within that device there is, there are concurrently running or parallel running applications or processes so you if you want to access a process within that device you need a port if you just need to access that computer in that case you need uh, an ip address only uh, i would like to further um, explain it like this uh, i am writing it like www.gogle.co.uk let's say i am globally accessing this uh, google.com and then i am just opening a command prompt and i am let's say i am pinging the uh, g -O, o g l e dot c o m okay no 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 I, it's wrong there is no g so that's it uh, okay Mm, I got the Google IP address so I can take this IP address and this is the Google uh, server IP address so I can copy this one and after I copy this one I can also access the Google uh, using this uh, this one uh, but since I'm using the uh, web browser so by default it's going to use the that particular port of the google and it's going to enter the google server so this portion uh, this portion this address is belonging to the google server inside let's say in south korea now so the google server in south korea has this one uh, ip address uh, and the port for accessing the web browser it's at uh, always the AT port is used for accessing the web browser and if you click the web browser uh, that address and then you just uh, paste this address and then you go to the uh, that port by default you are going if you even don't put it since you are using the chrome so chrome automatically goes to that particular port since it is also a web browser and web browser automatically use that particular by default using the at port to reach that host uh, the main server so it will use this uh, at port uh, by default let's assume i am using 81 port and can i reach there um, can i so let's see no of course no because 81 is not any port that is defined for the web browsing and the google.com server 
and even if I just type the 82 or 83 or any random number 41 32 55 or any number I won't be able to reach there um, because those ports are not allocated to the web hosting and the Google are not recognizing it so if you have to uh, reach the Google you have to use only the 80 ports and the 80 port is only has only use for this uh, browsing uh, or the web hosting things so I hope this is pretty much clear and if you are using the Mm, Facebook or some other messenger applications then the Facebook messenger it will have a different port and then that different port uh, with that IP along with that IP can be used to convey your message to that particular socket which is used by the uh, Facebook A port number is usually used to deliver a packet to a specific process or program and to be even more precise it is delivered to the process which created the socket that specified the particular port right and formally speaking a port number is a logical address of each application or process that uses a network or the internet to communicate a port number uniquely identifies a network based application on a computer so I any computer application that is running in a computer and it is used to communicate the outside world it should have a door it should have a port internet addressing representation and C so and previously we had seen this thing in very detail and I'll, I would like to talk more about this thing and as we have we had seen the internet addresses they were mm, there were more thing in walls it was not that simple that just write uh, something and like a simple integer and you can just access it but there were much more thing um, we, we were supposed to define the uh, port we were supposed to define the internet address and then we were also supposed to define what kind of internet uh, address version you are using IP address version you are using is it IP version 4 or IP version 6 so a couple of things are related to be uh, mentioned when you are writing a program in C uh, so the goal is to uh, we here need to specify only the IPv4 but uh, please remember IPv4 is not the only option there are also IPv6 addresses uh, but since uh, we want to make it as simple as possible, uh, we, we would like to specify the IV, IPv4 addresses. And we need to set a port address at both ends of the socket, uh, meaning that sending and receiving socket must have the same port number. And if they don't have the same port number, uh, the sending and uh, uh, receiving, then it means that they, their communication will be broken. So the port number should be similar for both of them. Uh, so the socket address um, uh, first of all uh, we, when we are going to declare uh, when we are going to define the socket address and see we are using the structure way and inside the structure way we have uh, several type of uh, things that needed to be declared for example what kind of family it is is it uh, IPv4 or IPv6 so here we have to define which kind of family we are using and this s means socket and input mean n mean input so uh, what kind of port you are using so that also you have to define and what is the address for the uh, for that particular socket that you are using finally and this the last one it's not that important so mostly we are not using it so if we see more in detail so the, the structure this uh, have a couple of things the family as I mentioned which kind of family you are using IPv4 or IPv6 the port number you are using and the address that you are considering now and if you want to know more about the sin underscore zero since we are not using it so it's just for zero padding and then you have to use this one more details here the link in the slides and then you can go and see the details 
Why do we need the port address and also the internet address? Once you have the port address and the uh, IP address, then in that case, you can bind it with the socket and then the socket makes some sense. The socket with the port number and also the internet address, it can be accessed. And when, if it, it can be accessed, if the server listen to that socket, any connection request coming at that particular socket can be accepted. And if connections can be accepted at that particular socket, that means that any client can be connected with that server. So what is the meaning? Meaning that if the client can be connected with the server, uh, client and server connection can be established. And if the client and server uh, connection can be established, that means that the uh, communication can happen between them. And if the communication can happen between them, there will be uh, exchange of data or transfer transmission of data between the server and the client. Uh, internet address representation in C. So there is a concept called the Little Indian and Big Indian. Depending upon your CPU, it can interpret the internet addresses in decimal using either the Little Indian or Big Indian. Some CPU of your computer, they are supporting the Little Indian, but if you are using the same program and some different CPU, they can be using the different um, Indian format. It can be using the Big Indian. So it depends on the hardware and architecture of your processor. If your processor is supporting big Indian, then the 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 format has changed. And it's just like this. Uh, if uh, it's a little Indian, the the, the um, these two bytes, uh, for example, if you write any hexadecimal, it will be writing it in this format. Uh, for example, starting from the most significant bit here and the least significant bit in the last. But if you are using the big Indian, the two bytes in the last, they will be shifted to the um, the, the first one. Uh, sorry, the byte and the last will be shifted to the first one. The middle will be shifted to the, best for the second one and these two will come in its own position. So we will see a couple of examples. Because of little and big Indian choice, we can convert the port number and also the IP address using these methods and thanks to these methods it makes us very uh, it makes the process very easier for us to just convert it and we don't have to do anything and if you remember in the previous program and the previous lab we use uh, HTONS um, which means the host to network uh, and then it changes anything from the host to from the host format to the network format okay remember one thing we human we understand decimal right so we understand the numbers the port number for example one two three four or 1990 80 80 30 30 anything like that we can easily understand those things but our computers they are hardware they can either see whether there is flow of data or non-flow of data they can see whether there is zero running or there is one running. So the computer either understand the hexadecimal code or it understand the binary code. So if we have to talk to our computer, if we have to communicate with our computer, we have to change our information to the computer computer readable format so that computer can understand our language and then it interpret it. And likewise, if computer gives us a very long sequence in binary or in hexadecimal, we won't be able to take any idea from that. In that case, the uh, data is reinterpreted into human readable form. And then we can see some ASCII form or some um, uh, decimal form that, are, that, are, that, that, that would be making some sense for us. So in that case, we can see the, the human readable things. To use the, the this thing, for example, you if you want to input a data, uh, for example, if you want to input the port number to the uh, network device, uh, in that case, you must have to change the input from your sense to the network device sense, right? So if you are you want to use the port number 1990, that 1990 port has to be changed to the hexadecimal form, which means that you have to input it from host to network form, right? 
and if you you are using the IP address in that case the IP address is usually four byte and four byte is too long sequence so the short cannot accommodate that one for that case you have to use the long so the long can be used for the IP addresses um, and again you have to you 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 have to put the human interpretable form uh, for example we can understand right one and two one six eight blah blah dot blah blah or ten dot ten dot four four dot five five something like that that we can understand but the network uh, is not understanding that thing so in that case we have to change it to the hexadecimal form so that the uh, network can then interpret those things for this program let's do this program uh, there insert the windows and see how is this thing working so I'll just make a new file and let's start it so first of all we have to declare the header files so again I would recommend you if you um, the video is so slow for you that you should fast forward it uh, but please don't uh, skip any important things Sorry, not Program, and uh, let's say we are defining some we will declare some ports so for that we should use unsigned short and unsigned short long for the IP addresses so for the port uh, let's say we are saying that our host port is equal to 0x1234 so do you know the 0 and then this kind of format 0x1234 uh, in the assembly language it is written as 1234h something like this this is basically the hexadecimal format and if I if you uh, further expand it uh, it will become like this um, control a and one two three four if you want to expand it there are each bit is represented and four bits so we can say that this is zero 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 one and then the next word is the next is two so zero zero one zero and then and this becomes the whole byte so one two makes this one byte and then I'll write down for three zero zero one z one one and the four is zero one zero zero so these are two terms so one two and three four so if you uh, this is uh, now in this format and if you are writing the other one let's say this is our port number and the IP let's say our IP is equal to uh, okay once you when when you are interpreting interpreting it in the big Indian this term will come here and this term will come here right so what is this thing it means this thing is equal to 3 4 and what is this thing it is equal to 1 2 so in big Indian it will be represented like that and if you take the example of this one which means that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 uh, let's not converted because the conversion will take quite a while so if you want to convert it into big Indian it will become the 7 8 5 6 3 4 and 1 2 so now
uh, I'm declaring this uh, uh, network underscore port so that uh, after converting the from host to the network it should uh, be stored here because it's C language so I should declare it first And yeah, I should always use the so the this one that I declared here is I told you uh, I should use that one, and then uh, I should use the, from the host to network function and from here I should be I should give this and likewise I would do the same thing uh, but I think uh, this one And this one all right and let me print it out let me print how it was looking before and how it looked after so the uh, host order port I will use use the before it look like this and I have to do some changes network and host order address and this network order network order address and then here is and then there is this one and then finally I will take this one and then this one that's it so and oh I forgot this one I should have done it earlier so return to zero I will save this program now and you know we have to save it so I'll go to CYG win and from there I will go to the home and then I'll go to the own directory and um, let's say I'm calling it uh, Indian dot C So I have this one and GCC what is the name of the program and minus O and let's say end and dot slash end and so you can see one two three four and after that it becomes three four one two and then I had one two three four seven oh what's what's happening there? it's something very random oops it was not supposed to be short right so if I compile it and then uh, I run it uh, it should be something like this so uh, one two three four it was this one before but when we converted it it, it becomes three four one two 
and likewise the other one was 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 but after conversion it is 7 8 5 6 3 4 and 1 2 which exactly which is exactly the same i predicted you, i predicted you earlier and let let me do one more experiment here i'll take this one file here and i'll just assume some um, address for example and sign long and i'll say like let's say host underscore a double dr e double s2 and i'll say from the network the to the host and the long and from there i'll take this the network address and control c and also this is pasted here and i'll just print it out So after conversion is our address should look like this one. So uh, which I means that uh, from here we converted the network address from the host to the network address and from the network address I'm reconverting it to the host address and this address should now look like exactly the same which was the default value. And let's see what's happening there. So I'll just run it and then yeah this one so see so one two one two two three four three four five six and seven eight so it is exactly one two three four five six and seven eight exactly the same value as before uh, in the previous lab we also see like uh, any address array um, any address uh, we put it there and it means that once once you create a socket and any request is coming from the clients from number of clients it should be uh, accepted so if you just um, put this value uh, HTML to the any address coming from there then any address will be accepted at that listening port uh, and to explain it more explicitly, uh, let's take the, this example. Uh, if you just put this one, this any ad uh, any address coming at the server, and then once you run the server, it will accept any address that is coming at this uh, at that listening port. Uh, at the client side, you you will just uh, write write this one code, the, this one destination. And once you do that, it will just uh, connect to that server and it will grab the data from there. Uh, now let's see some files. Uh, I'll upload it with the um, lab, uh, but uh, I'll just briefly explain you what these files are and what is the what are the contents inside there. So uh, now let's play with some files, some source files, and see um, how this conversion works. So I have already downloaded it here. I'll go to the source code and from there I should uh, import all the files to this one. And I think I had opened it already. Mm, okay, as I mentioned you, the, uh, first of all you know why we need this and then uh, since we have used another function so we will call it here so there's just a basic c and then this is the main program uh, our interpreting address is something like this once one two say one two three two dot 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 blah dot blah so the address should be looking like this and this is the human interpretable form uh, but once you are giving it to the socket uh, the socket should uh, sorry when you are giving it to the network the network should understand it in the form of hexadecimal format so for that one we use a function for example uh, from the address to the network so
so the human interpretable address to the network form and that will just convert the address which is given here into an other form and it will give us um, uh, the readable format and then we have finally printed it out here and if there is anything like um, what do you think the conversion can be a problem because we have two two byte of uh, we have a byte length for each one so if we are exceeding 255 for example i'm giving it 256 or 257 uh, the maximum limit here is 255 so if you i'm exceeding that one then i'll give you, i'll be getting some conversion error so i should be also taking care of that thing i should not exceed the maximum bond of this one so the all the values here should be lesser than 255 and if it is greater then of course it will give me an error and finally once i just convert it using this one then i can print it out and it will give me the answer and let's see it let's see how it works so this one is inet.8 okay so gcc minus o object file of the inet underscore aton dot c and i'm calling it uh, a t o n right um, i think this is pretty enough and then gcc and then uh, the file name is a t o n uh, i net a t o n dot c minus object file and let i'm calling it a t o n and then i'll just print it out aton and it should give me the address which is equivalent address of this one and how about i just make uh, an erratic things let's say i'm calling it 257 right and i'll just save it here and i'll run this again and let's see if it works here conversion error because 257 is exceeding the maximum bound and let me take the maximum limit for example 255 and dot 255 dot 255 dot 255 which is the maximum limit so i should see something like fffffff like that and if i save it and just run it and then it should be fffffff that's it it's working so uh, if I'm exceeding FFF, it means that it needs some more memory, which means that it's there is no oh, uh, more than this capacity available, and it will give us the conversion error. And um, if I look at this one, um, I think no, it's the same file. So let me make it no. And uh, here I have some. Um, address in the network form which is in hexadecimal form and i want to see it into into human interpretable form so for that one we have to use some uh, network to address the uh, exactly reciprocal of this one this one was address to network right and that was that one is network to address and then i'll just put this one and then this one and then uh, that should work uh, I, I should just run this one file and uh, I should change the name um, network to this one and NTOA I'll call it uh, sorry for first I have to mention the object file right so the object file and then NTOA and then I'll just run it NTOA and not that exe just like that so it, it will convert the, the, these two addresses into one two three four and uh, again one 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 so uh, you have to see more in detail how this program works it's quite simple I can see a very big mistake is there and there should be some error uh, if you can see that it means that you are doing pretty well and let me let me let me check it let me check it whether I'm giving it two addresses in human inter interpretable form and then I'm converting it uh, to the network addresses and uh, network form and then let us see um, how it is showing it and uh, that form 
and if there is any error it should show me that there is error occur and if there is no error it should just print it out right so just just see um, just see how it works mm, uh, the name of this file is I need and then it is it, it the R um, that C and then the object file and then I will call a double D R and dot slash a double D R and it should the first one it is okay and there is some error and if you look at this one carefully uh, this is the error so let's put uh, any number like some lower than 256 make it 255 even and it should work so I'll save it and then uh, oh, I close it so I will just run it and I will go to that one and now the object file is created and I will see and there is no error anymore so that's it uh, uh, there are a lot of files for your practice so check all the files and please understand each and every code and um, if you have any problem you can contact me through email and I'll address your problem I hope you all stay safe and see you in next lab thank you